Venturing even further west, I came across two of the most curious places in all of my journey. Obviously, as, as you can tell, I, I don't throw anything away, give or take. Yes, I love roadside attractions like this, and my parents stopped at all these weird places. And to be honest with you, my stepdad wishes he had not stopped at those places after I started building this one. But because uh, he's right there with the neighbors, not, not, not understanding any of this at all. Because these are the type of places I like going to, and there are not that many out here. And then what I find is like some people have never heard of us. They have not come across you know roadside America, road trippers, all that. Because we're all listen on a lot of different sites and they they don't know about it there's accidentally because a lot of people do like to take the back roads and they're amazed to see a place and they are technically amazed that kentucky actually has a place like this because you don't expect to see places like this in this area they're normally out west like on route 66 or or in the older like even the lincoln highway they're all out west basically and they're not like so some people are like totally amazed to see this place here i'm uh, keith holt and this is known now as Apple Valley Hibley Gardens and Toyland. It basically started back in 1928 when my grandfather came here and bought an apple orchard and a two room house. And he started making the apple cider and selling out along the highway along with the apples. And then in 32, they, they paved the highway out here out front, Highway 68, they paved it. So he was fearing he could make a little extra money off the tourist. So he had the room, he had a house added on to, so they have a room the rent to the tourist. And then I assume that's when he built the little white building that's been everything from a four seat diner to a, a Gulf gas station from 39 to 64. As we've been here for a while, I would say majority of the uh, local people have grown to get used to us. I'm not saying they still like us, but they've gotten used to us. And a lot of people do know we are bringing folks in from all over, all over the world, so to speak, uh, that come through this area because you know they're not coming here to see us strictly, but when they come say from Europe or France and uh, Israel, we had some, a couple guys even from Israel that were doing a, a bike. They had bought their, they'd come to this country, bought two bikes to travel Route 66. They had read about us, so they came off Route 66 to come check us out. So we do bring tourists in here that are over, coming over this country to do other things and they map us. And so some of the people realize that, but we still do, because like recently one of the local TV stations we got covered on something and then my Facebook messaging, I got some people messaging me like, go back to your planet weirdo, uh, Marshall County does not need this type of publicity, which I found entertaining because stuff like that, bad reviews and people stating that stuff to me, I, I literally find it funny. It's, it's, I just, I love reading that type of stuff. And now we are written about in certain places we are written about that I am trying to keep that flair of the old roadside attraction alive. Like I said, a lot of people compare me to Route 66 but this is technically 68 out here. But, but yes, I am trying to keep that alive. And like, of course, I have my lawnmower ranch, which is a tribute to Cadillac Ranch. And I have another thing called Salvation Mound, which is my tribute to Salvation Mountain. And everything kept growing from the county trying to get rid of me. And then the artists, a few of the artists from Paducah would come here and say, dude, you are a folk artist. You gotta start playing up on it. And then like the, your friend JD, like JD was here one time telling me that I reminded him of a, uh, like uh, the beginnings of a Paradise Gardens. I'm like, what's that? And and then he said, I was done by Howard Fencer. I'm like, who's that? So I had to do all this research, but I gradually learned what folk artists were. And then I kind of agree that now I kind of play, because I went to LA to become a, an actor. And it turns out I came back here now and my whole life is an act, so to speak, because I don't consider myself an artist. So I'm technically portraying an artist now and everything around me is, is, is basically an act. So. Well, I still hope of, I, I've never given up on that dream. I still hope to have an 80 by 100 foot building here and do the toy land the way I originally visualized it when I came out here in 2006, six, I think it was, when I visually came out here because I had my concept drawings, all that stuff. I already had a lot done in, in LA. And then for like two or three years in LA, I, I, I would tell all these people about my dream and what I plan to do in Kentucky and, you know, told them about it. And then people would donate toys to me and, I got a pretty massive collection to do it with, so I still want my dream to come true. Now, however, if my dream ever comes true, they will still get the art, the art part of it, because I actually find the hillbilly part fun now, because that's even more fun, because it gets me fun trying to figure out what to do with this stuff. 
And people, of course, drop me off junk about her every other week. I get some new art supplies here. So it's kind of fun doing this. And then I do have six acres, so it's kind of like I eventually plan to have the whole acreage, like where it would be a path you could walk with all the bad puns. Just someday, I guess, I will have to break down and draw a map with the bad puns on it. It is a tribute to Roadside America, and that's what it, that's all I'm trying to get the place. And then that's the other thing I found hard. I am a mom pop operation, so I technically don't have the money anymore. I did because to me, uh, I know they're not prefab houses, but I, I and Cora even made a comment that the houses across the street from me are like I, prefab houses are more an eyesore to me than a place like this because you're looking at at. I, I don't know, I'd rather look at artistic stuff and, and then like when I traveled, even when I lived in LA, I would travel to places like this and check this type of stuff out and found it interesting. Never knew at that time I would become one of those people. And then like how I like to say now is I, yes, I do try to bring the weird out of Kentucky.